Hey everyone, I'm Art Breeze. This is Summoner Wars, and today we've got the week one matchup for the Summoner Wars League. That's the Phoenix Elves and the Tundra Orcs. I'm the Tundra Orcs, and my opponent is the Phoenix Elves. I picked this specific matchup because I believe that the Phoenix Elves have the advantage in it, although it's a slight advantage. This is probably the closest matchup that I've seen of any of the ones that I've done a video on so far for sure. As you can see, I started this game by moving forward into the midfield and dropping a wall on top of Maldaria's starting wall. In my experience, I have usually ended up regretting making that decision. And as you're going to see here, Grognak is going to take some punishment. It seems like whenever I put a wall deep, Grognak takes some punishment. But I stand by the decision I made. It worked out quite well in this game, as you're about to see. I also make use of a tricky kind of wall event that Grognak has. And what I'm talking about is freeze. As you're gonna see here, I freeze the fire beast. Now that fire beast for all intents and purposes is a wall for the next turn. Nobody can go through it, nobody can attack it. And that actually allows me to kind of take care of the ember mages that have come into my kitchen. I'm able to clear them out and actually gain quite a bit of magic here with the use of a fighter that fortunately gives me two attacks and two magic. And so I'm feeling like I'm in pretty good shape here. Now really briefly, Maldaria's game plan usually doesn't change much. She likes to hang back in the backfield. And when the time is right, then she pushes forward into the midfield. And this is maybe the mistake that Maldaria made she pushes into the midfield quite aggressively here. She forms a column with her own units and actually kind of boxes herself in. That's not a great configuration for Maldaria. It's not going to be good for Grognak if Maldaria can break through. But as you're going to see in this game, she's unable to do that. I'm able to keep her at bay. I suppose she knew she had Divine Retribution in her hand and said, well, nothing to be worried about. I drop a wall. And now there's kind of the board is kind of tilted a bit. I'm on one side of the board and Maldaria is on the other side of the board. Now here Maldaria pushes in even deeper. She's even deeper into my territory. Not necessarily a bad thing. All of the summoning points are closed off and that is the problem when you have walls that are next to each other is it's quite easy to close the summon points off. Here I use freeze again on that archer and now Maldaria is really boxed in. She has nowhere to go. She can't move off of my wall to attack my smasher. Otherwise I'll summon something that's gonna hurt her. So she's got to leave that smasher there. And that smasher is going to threaten her the following turn. So she's got to figure something out. She's in, she's in a bit of trouble here. Now, if you look on that one side, had I been able to seal off with that extra fighter I missed on that roll, here's the consequence of failing to hit that roll. I had leakage and the fire beast jumped off of the Ember Mage, came in and did even more damage on Grognak. He's now down to six health. He's going to be hiding for most of the game. And here we go. We've got Retribution on top of that. So it's going to be even harder for me to counter. I summon Shonk. Shonk is basically a counter to Blinding Flare and a pretty good one. He doesn't care at all what uh, happens with those dice because he neutralizes Blinding Flare and he manages to punish Maldaria a little bit and put Maldaria in a sticky situation. She's really stuffed down the middle of a pipe here and she's got to back her way out of it. On the other side of the board, though, you can see that once again, they're coming after Grognak and they're going to do more damage against him. I made a tactical error, um, something I really didn't see which was when the fire beast 
took one damage off of the shaman. Maldaria was able to use burn and actually kill that shaman and get right at Grognak. So that was a good move on my opponent's part. I, of course, have to counter. I was able to seal off that spot once again. And as you can see on my, on the other side of the board, where the Phoenix Elves are, they're in big trouble. I missed a turn here. So as you can see, Maldary is backing out. I whiff on this Fire Beast, which hurts a lot. The following turn, the Fire Beast comes at me. This was the second big whiff. That first was when my fighter failed to seal off that summoning point and the fire beast got in here the they failed to kill the fire beast and now he's just going to do more damage and hurt them even more fortunately shonk has a lot of health and it, it really didn't make much of a difference i was going to lose that charger anyways not worried about that and i'm glad that i get at least one more swing with shonk he's good for about Usually two or three misses of those eight dice city rolls or specials or whatever you want to call them. So he's kind of, he's basically a three AB unit. And there he gets two. Good enough. As you can see, I've started really marching forward with smashers. Smashers are a special unit. They're probably the best unit that either the Phoenix Elves have to counter anything the Tundra Orcs have and anything the Tundra Orcs have to counter the Phoenix Elves. That unit is a Smasher. Smashers can one-shot a Fire Beast who only has three health. And even though Smashers don't have as much health as they seem, it's still enough health to withstand most of the attacks of the Phoenix Elves. And it also really negates direct damage attacks, which are more damaging against units unlike the Smasher. The Smasher takes the punishment, has the extra health to accept it. So needless to say, Smashers are good units versus the Phoenix Elves. They don't have a very good answer for them. Their best answer is probably Maldaria herself. I would say the reason why the Phoenix Elves have an advantage in this matchup, even if it's a smaller one, is Maldaria's power and events are that powerful. She can attack, put a blocker in front of her every time she does that. She can throw four dice from range. That's enough to really hurt just about anything. And with Spirit of the Phoenix, she can combo that with Divine Retribution. She can combo that with Finessa. She can combo that with any of the other abilities, such as Ember Mage as well. Or sorry, um, Ember Archers, and do extra damage through their movement phase. So that's why she tends to have the advantage. However, what you're seeing here is her resources are now exhausted. She put herself in a bad situation, getting kind of stuck in the midfield. Now she backs out, but that was only after my Smashers had a chance to move in and really take control of the game. I think that's ultimately why I was able to take this one from Maldaria. As you can see here, this is going to be the game here. I actually have one extra magic, which I can use to summon Targan. So that's Phoenix Elves and Tundra Arcs for you. There's not much more to say here. I think I'll just cap it off by saying it is a tight matchup. It's winnable by either side. Uh, generally, though, I think the Phoenix Elves have the advantage, but not today. Thanks for watching. That's all I got. Take care and good luck in the league.